In today's episode of The Swing Report, we have new Callaway Rogue ST drivers, four models. We have Thomas here hitting the shots, and we're gonna tell you everything you need to know. Also, golfers, make sure you skip to the final chapter for our final thoughts. And then also, hit that subscribe button and like the video. Hey golfers, I'm Drew Maholder, Second Swing in Golf, and today I'm joined by Thomas Campbell, Master Club Fitter here at Second Swing in Minnetonka. And today, it's a, another very exciting day, Thomas. New drivers for 2022, the Rogue ST models, all four of them here. Uh, I know you've played Callaway drivers in the past, so this is a very exciting day for you too. I'm very excited because I like this look, this new look here. There's a lot of new things here with the Callaway drivers, but a lot of the old features as well that's made them so successful. So, um, I mean, first look, Thomas, when you check out these drivers, you get your first glance, what did you notice right away? Well, first thing I'm looking at is the crown. Mm -hmm. The crown no longer yep. is glossy and shiny. It's right. got that matte finish to it. So that's going to be very appealing to those golfers that have noticed with Callaway drivers in the past that you're seeing a bit of a shine on the golf course. Mm -hmm. Yep, I know that was the one thing that I've noticed that's maybe compared to other brands. They've started a little bit go away from that glossy look on top. Uh, and I think Callaway's following suit here. And I think it's a really clean look too with that kind of gold uh, trim that they've used for this Rogue ST line. But four models here. Uh, so they've added one this year that's, you know, I guess readily available to the public. And that is that triple diamond model that you've seen maybe on tour. Uh, you go online and check out, you know, what's in the bag of Callaway staffers. You maybe see a lot of players playing that triple diamond head. So we have, you know, the Rogue ST Max, the Rogue ST Max D, the Rogue ST Max LS, and then the Rogue ST LS Triple Diamond Head. So explain to me what Triple Diamond is, Thomas, and what that means here. Yeah, that's a lot of options. The Triple Diamond, it's a slightly smaller club head. Okay. So it's 450 cc's. Okay. Um, it's gonna be a little bit more fade bias than the, okay. other, than the other models, and just extremely low spin. It's gonna have a weight screw forward as well. Okay. So that's gonna also reduce the spin. It's gonna get very, very high ball speeds and a more moderate, I guess, trajectory. Yeah, yeah, so you, you see, you know, these players with super high speeds that play on tour, and I mean, there are players, the amateurs too, that have a ton of speed and need to reduce that spin even more than these max heads could do, uh, and that's where the triple diamond comes in, but you do lose some forgiveness just because of that weight you mentioned forward. I think it's a six gram weight that is forward in the head that's gonna reduce the stability of the head. So that is the, the, the drawback there, but, you get your forgiveness out of the rest of these Max heads between the Max, the Max D, and the Max LS. Yeah, I mean, it's still considered a high forgiving driver. Yes, yeah. it's, it's not, it's just not as not not considered as, highest as, like the other Not three. as forgiving as the yeah, others, right. correct. It's still, I mean, everything that Callaway's done with your artificial intelligence, with the jailbreak velocity blades, and uh, the speed frame there, and then you also have now the speed cartridge in each of these drivers too in the back, the new tungsten speed cartridge. Uh, so there's still a ton of forgiveness packed in each of these models. Right, yeah, I mean, that's the end of the story here with, you know, when we have limitations on how fast the ball can come right. off the club face is we're searching for ways to help the golfers on those off-center hits, and forgiveness is key, and you talk about that tungsten speed cartridge, that is probably the biggest thing difference for this year for Callaway. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so you have in the max head, you have 26 grams in that tungsten speed cartridge, and they're, it's placed all in the back, most stable, most forgiving. You have the Max D, which, as you can probably tell, that draw bias head. It's gonna have 20 grams in the back, but then another extra weight in the heel to promote that draw bias. The Rogue ST Max LS head is going to be a 23 gram weight in that back. Uh, so it's still promoting some low spin, but also some forgiveness. And then finally, that Triple Diamond head, 20 grams again, uh, but also some weight forward. So. All the weight is positioned kind of precisely to provide different types of trajectories and characteristics and ball flights, depending on what the golfer needs. Right, and then also talking about lying on the drivers. Mm -hmm. So the, the nine degree driver head, for example, when you've got the Rogue Max D, the Rogue ST Max D, that is, uh, that has got a 60 degree lie angle. So it's a little bit more upright okay. than the others. At the other end of the spectrum, you've got the, the Rogue Max ST, you've got the Triple Diamond, that one is 57 degrees with a lie angle. So we've got a range from 60 degrees to okay. 57 degrees. Three degrees in a lie angle makes a big difference in where that ball starts right. directionally wise. Yeah, and I think you see, you know, I think there's a trend maybe to how players set up and deliver the club that you're seeing, and that's why the stock, I guess the standard lie angle is, is different throughout these clubs. Lastly, we'll touch on stock shafts. So the Project X Cypher is gonna be kind of the more, I guess, lightweight, or uh, maybe you see it in the regular or stiff flexes. Then there's a new offer from uh, Mitsubishi, the Chemical Tensai um, AV X-Link. So there's a blue and a white 
in those two that are stock shafts available here. Uh, we'll be testing the white one today. So be curious to get your feedback on that as well. But Rogue ST drivers, there's a lot of information that we provided you just now. But I think really what people want to see is the testing here. So again, four models, we'll hit all of them. Uh, we've talked about what we kind of expect a little bit based on where the weighting, but uh, we should see some explosive numbers here. Yeah, let's hit some shots and see how they perform. So Thomas, you've got, looks like the Max D head. Right. So let's start with that one, which, you know, that's going to have that draw bias. But looking down at that club, what do you see? Yeah, I mean, talking about the, the lion goal, it definitely sits, feel like it sits a little bit more upright looking okay. down at it. And the face looks like it's maybe just a little bit more shut. So it definitely looks a little more draw bias. Okay, okay. Yeah. How about, you know, anything in terms of, you know, we talked about the matte, the matte crown. Is there, you know, do, do you like that more? Is it more appealing? You know, how does that compare to maybe past Callaway drivers? Well, I mean, testing inside, it's going to be hard to, to know what the shininess is going to be like, yeah. you know, outside. But... Who doesn't like a matte finish, yeah. right? It, it just looks very, very clean. Uh, it, it looks awesome. I'm mm -hmm. not gonna lie. It, it looks it looks great. Yeah. And how about the offset too, with that 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 uh, draw bias? I know a lot of people would be curious about that, and if they're fitting into that that draw bias type club head. Do you see a lot there? Is it like a is it eye catching? If you know, because some of these draw bias drivers out there, you can really tell that offset. There. I don't really see offset, but I do see it looks like the face is slightly closed. Okay. And that line kind of sets up a little right. Yeah. Wow. Ooh, a little more ball speed there. It is turning over though. Wow. <laughs> that's, a, that's a lot of curve. It is. That's some curve, yeah. I don't think I've seen that much curve on a shot before. That started that Which, straight. You know, that's that's encouraging for the player that you know blocks it or has that face open all the time. Right. 180 feet of curb to the left. And that is, that's that is not even correction. like it's not even like a, a a duck hook either. Right. You know, that's a it's a high swooping draw essentially. Right. I mean, my face to path was only negative 2.9. <laughs> right. <laughs> Good ball speed there. Wow, that is curving left. Look at that, 1.2 was your face to path. And we know with the smash factor 1.5 that I hit yeah. it pretty close to the no, face. No, you, you hit it. You must have hit it. Wow, that's, that's crazy. Didn't quite hit that one as well. A little high toe and there spin right drops and didn't go after <laughs> so that one So it's funny how much curve it's, I mean, again, that was off the toe, so it has yeah. something to do with it, but... Yeah, face a path of minus 0 0.3 that time. It's still curving. This has got to be the easiest draw shots Seriously. I've ever hit. Because, <laughs> I mean, based on the numbers and, like, your swing, you know, tendencies, you wouldn't expect as much curve as we've seen so far. Right. That might be a little too far left. Yeah. Yeah, that's yeah. not the farthest one left. Yeah, it's easy to turn over. That's what i got to say. Yeah. Look at that. Let's turn over. Now, I'm, I'm, I'm going to be very curious now because, you know, these other heads aren't draw bias. And then you also have the, uh, the triple diamond here that we'll probably hit at the end. That's even probably more fade bias than anything. Well, the ST Max is still slightly draw bias. Is it? Okay. Yeah. So, but, and you shouldn't see that, you know, that's kind of crazy. Uh, and I want to bring up the numbers because, you know, we got five shots. And you look at the swing information here. Your face angle is, on average, barely, barely closed. And then your face to path is still less than two degrees, uh, you know. Less than two degrees, but getting a lot of curve on that the is, to the left. Yeah. And I, I, that's crazy. I mean, unless I'm seeing something or I'm missing something here, I, that's kind of nuts to me. It's... <laughs> It's quite shocking to see that, that one that had 180 feet of curve. I was like, wow, that is just this. Yeah, because I, I think you hit all of most of these. You hit them and you were like, well, there's a little draw. And then it's just 180, 154, 136 feet of curve. Yeah. All right. Well, there's Shot a base correction. Line. Yeah. yeah. So and that's the thing good. is you don't struggle with 
the f slice or the fade or anything right. like that. Player that does sees this and their eyebrows are raised probably a little bit, saying, "Oh, okay, this might be the actual the draw bias driver that actually kind of corrects my mistakes a little bit." Well, we've still got more shot correction that could come with this driver. Putting the mm -hmm. loft up, yeah. putting it in the D setting, the more upright setting as well. There you go. So you got extra help too. Mm -hmm. yep. So let's move on then. Let's kind of decrease that draw bias a little bit then. Go with the Rogue ST Max. Okay. All right. You put that one down. Do you see? you know, the differences between the draw bias head and kind of the, the standard max head? Yeah, I mean, it doesn't look as closed. Mm -hmm. it, lo it still looks like it is slightly closed. Now, I'm a golfer that played like the, the max LS head. Yeah. So that's usually set a little, little more open for me looking sure. down at it. But yeah, it's not quite as okay. pronounced as the, as the previous head. Yeah. yeah. And it also doesn't have any extra weight in the heel with this yeah. one. It's just kind of very neutral. I think it's got 26 grams all the way kind mm -hmm. of pushed back. So it should be, I think, I think the most forgiving uh, head of the four here, at least for in terms of MOI, with that weight back. All right. Good balls. There you go. Interesting how your first shot with this one is suddenly a curve to the right. 1-5 smash, yeah, that's, that's interesting. Not much, but it's a, a very bit. efficient swing, though. Didn't hit that well. Wow, there we go. Getting close to that 300 carry mark. It's pretty. That's pretty good right there. Mm -hmm. I mean, this two in a row, one five smash. I haven't seen that much recently either, so it's always promising. Wow. Another one. I mean, you're, you're right under that 300 carry mark with <laughs> this, uh, this Max Club head right now. Yeah, it's been pretty impressive so far. I mean, it's, Wolf White's just been straighter. Yeah, oh yeah. yeah. It's mean, less it's curve. Correct, yeah. Uh, four left. Yeah, you're cool. That was user error on that one. Was that a toe strike or no? That was close face and probably a little telly. 1-5 smash. Yeah, 1-5 smash. I'll just leave it. it. Pretty good as well. Mm -hmm. Wow. Well, a couple of things stand out to me on that. Uh, number one was a straighter ball flight. Um, you know, we had, if I bring this up here, so we had, that's total, I'm bring up the carry. So. Aside from the one you really tugged over here. Yep, that was um, more user error on that Yeah, shot. we had four that were essentially equal to or more right than the furthest most right one of the max D head. Um, that, so that clearly there's a difference in the dispersion and the tendency of the club to kind of turn over or, well, resist that with this club. Uh, but then I also wanted to show the carry consistency um, because with the max head, first of all, look at that spin, how close that is, but then with the max head, your carry distance was very similar across the board. Yeah, yeah. I mean, there's the one that I left the face close, that's yep. the one that's left that was right. lower, but otherwise all the others were right around about 296, mm -hmm. I think, 296, yeah, I mean, 296. See, if we take that out, you see how that deviation number goes to 1.2, so yeah, pretty good from hitting, you're hitting the ball 300 yards and you're that consistent with it, so you can see on the map too how that changes things if you take that one out and you can do one of these and you can see you know how that straightens out and you mentioned right away you it was straighter it wasn't curving nearly as much right we can go back and um, look at the curve numbers and we can see you know we're certainly below you know 50 for most of them you got one that went over like you said again take that out and you average curve 32 feet compared to the 132 with the, the max D that's quite different that's a big difference <laughs> that's a big, that's a big difference, difference there what about ball speed uh, any differences there in ball speed numbers between them at all I think I was swinging pretty similar club speed. Yeah, yeah. pretty similar club speed. A little bit more ball, a little speed, more ball speed with the max. Yep. I think you had you hit one five. You're hitting one five zero a lot today. A lot yep. more with that uh, the max head there. Interesting that launch was a little Slightly bit slightly lower. lower launch. Yep. It's pretty similar spin. Yeah. Yep. Pretty similar. I mean, landing angle and height are the, pretty basically the same. So there is a lot of similarities between the two. I think you are seeing the significance of the the weighting in the club head though. Um, where you can get a little bit more in the back with the max, stabilizes it, kind of promotes a straighter shot. 
the, the max D is just going to have more weight in the heel, uh, which will promote that draw or that kind of right to left ball flight for a right handed golfer. And you saw that on the map. I mean, it's pretty clear as day there. So um, interesting because now we move into the max LS head. And what would you expect on that now after seeing the first two? Well, it's supposed to spin less, so yeah. probably a little less less spin. Mm -hmm. um, being playing uh, the LS head last year myself, um, probably a little bit harder to turn over. Okay. Possibly a little faster bowl speed, but it's hard when the smash factor is already almost at one five. Right, anyway, you're hitting it so. really efficiently today, so yeah. in a way, it almost like it's pretty. It's setting a very high bar for the max LS here, but uh, I guess we'll see if you can beat it. All right. Yeah, this doesn't sit closed. Yeah, if anything, yeah. it's open, or is it just it's, still It's pretty still neutral? pretty neutral. Okay. I, I wouldn't say it's open. I just think it's just a, a sits very, very neutral looking okay. down at. Okay. Maybe a little left. No, that didn't no. curve as left as I would have maybe initially thought. Started a little right. No, yeah, no problem. I'm kind of wondering if we're going to see that trend of the, the dispersion trend kind of continually move to the right as we go up the, the ladder here in terms of the driver heads because we're kind of going away from draw bias and forgiveness and going more towards low spin and kind of that almost fade bias in a way. Right. Yeah. I mean, looking down at a dress, it, it seems like it's, it would present that way. Now, the first shot, that was more user error yeah. being a little bit left, but it didn't really sure. go like way left like no, no, yeah, it's some still, of the other ones. Yeah. That one I didn't quite catch. Um, it kind of hung in there just on the, on the right side. Mm -hmm. That was better. Interesting. Well, we're seeing that trend go, you know, the dispersion map go a little bit right now. Right. I'm a little surprised with the spin. I was expecting less spin. Yeah, that spin. is spinning a little bit more, isn't it? Now, bull flight's probably going to influence that there, too. And I hit that one well. I mean, 1-5 smash, but the spin was just a little mm -hmm. higher. But it was... Well, I'm curious, once we're done with all the shots, maybe we'll look at the impact location and see if that's going to be doing anything. Maybe a right. little bit lower on the face on, with the uh, contact. Oh, there's a good one. Three whole feet of curve on that shot. That's pretty straight. Got to say, you're getting a lot of height with the, the, these drivers right now. Yeah, I mean, Across nine degrees of loft is maybe a little too much loft on I, me right now. I know. I know you've toyed with going lower before and gaming it, but it seems like these are launching a little bit higher. All right. That's five, right? That one turned over a little bit more, but here's our dispersion map right now. So we got two kind of over here that you turned over a little bit, and then really these three are all right next to each other. They were kind of, you know, pretty much dead straight ball flights on all of those. And so yeah. what, do we, what, do we, what do we take away from that one there? Because I think the one thing that I'm curious about is, is this, this spin number being a little bit higher actually than the first two. Yeah, I mean, I've got three shots that were hung, hung to the right side yeah. a little bit more, so that naturally is going to cause the ball to spin mm -hmm. a little more with a little more fade. Um, I think that's why we're seeing that spin just a touch higher. Yeah. Now, we're talking here 1953 to 2157. We're talking all three heads are within 200 RPMs of each other. Right, yeah. So it's not like it's spinning 500, 700 RPMs mm -hmm. higher or anything like that. Yeah. Um, I mean, there's so much that can go into it. It can be hit location. It can be yeah. attack angle. I presume my attack angle usually is pretty far up. I'm going to guess they were all probably pretty similar. Yeah, I mean, yeah, you take you're usually, there. you know, you're actually hitting it up the most with, uh, hitting up on it the most with the max D head, but the max and max LS are very similar, you know, just over seven degrees. Uh, I, interesting though, I think that's just spin related, but your the ball flew 10 feet higher in the air, yep. roughly compared to the other two. Um, but, you know, it again reduced that curve a little bit too. So we're yeah. seeing of that trend again of going away from that you know left curvature and i'm um, curious now to see what happens then with that triple diamond head and how much that changes again yeah it was the straightest on most straightest on average yeah um which i do do like and i also like the fact that it didn't, I didn't get any of those that went straight left on me yeah but yeah. a lot of golfers don't like that quick left with the mm -hmm. driver so I eliminated that by the way the club sits and also yeah. the way it's designed no i think that, that this has been the most consistent one so far 
Um, and it, it might, probably not a coincidence that you've played the Max LS in the Epic series last year. Uh, so, you know, it's, it's probably a fit for you. Uh, but with that said, this triple diamond head could also be a fit for you uh, as someone with a lot of speed and, you know, prefers a low, you know, lower spin off the tee. So the LS head triple diamond, let's test that out. And uh, I'm very curious on this one. All right. This, uh, this is pretty appealing on the eye. Yeah. I know you like that kind of more rounded, kind of compact head. And I, I yeah. imagine that's the most compact of all four so far. It's definitely the most circular, pear-shaped looking one, and it's just a touch smaller as well. Yeah. yeah. Interesting. Ball speed number there. Oh, yeah. Wow, that's it's a, a good start. Spin. That's ball speed and, and club speed. Both kind of went up right away with that first one. Ooh. Ooh, ball speed and low spin. Wow. There's the draw. Kind of jumped at that one too. That was one of the lowest flights of the day. Yeah. That was hit well. Wow. Yeah. Oh, you're right behind that 300 carry mark. One foot of, of curve there. One whole foot. Oh. Oh, come on. Two ninety nine point nine. Oh, doesn't get much closer than that. Not too far left. Yep, Ooh. that's fine. That's still pretty darn good performance from the triple diamond because I again I haven't. I would imagine if we look at this dispersion here and yeah, that's going to be pretty darn good. And then we bring up numbers here. But so give me kind of your, your take now. You've hit all four. Kind of a quick first reaction hitting all four of them. Um, I know one of the discussions you might have to have too with yourself. And if you're thinking about upgrading to, to Rogue this year, Max LS or Triple Diamond? And I guess the advantages and disadvantages to those two. Because I would imagine both are going to be kind of geared towards those maybe faster swinging players. But there is like the decision to be made there about which is better for you. Yeah, I wasn't sure if I was going to like the triple diamond LS going from 460 to 450 mm -hmm. CC. It's a, it's a change, but it really made me you know feel pretty confident the ball was not going to go left on me. Okay. And I actually noticed my club speed did jump up a little bit it more mm -hmm. with that driver. It's like I was like trying to hit it more solid. It's like you it had like you, you had more confidence that you could really go at it, yep. knowing that it wasn't going to have that kind of left hook on it. Uh, because, you, I mean, clearly with the other driver, especially that Max D, you kind of had that possibility still where you could really turn it over. Yep. And it could become dangerous. But, I mean, the farthest left shot that you had, you're these two here with the uh, triple diamond. And, you know, that was, it's not, it was more right than anything with the, the draw head. And then you're talking... It's the furthest, you know, right of all the furthest left, if that makes any sense. But the, you know, the triple diamond dispersion is, I think, the best one. You look at this map, for you anyway. Yeah, the so. way it just set up at address, it just inspired confidence for me to mm -hmm. trust it and go after it. Yeah, so now, numbers here. Uh, walk me through what do you see here. You know, you, you're so close to that, that 300 carry number here with the triple diamond. But, uh, you know... I think that some of the trends that we expected did come to fruition. There was a couple that didn't, though. Namely, the spin, I think, is one thing that we noted. And I think that could be because the ball is out to the right a little bit more on those. Um, whereas, you know, you hook the ball or have that draw, it does generally decrease the spin. So uh, is, what else do you see? What are some other takeaways that you have? Yeah, I mean, there's so much goes into, into the spin rate. Um, you got attack angle, you got hit location. Mm -hmm. Those two are going to influence the spin a, a lot. And if you're not catching the ball in the right spot, the ball's going to spin a, a lot more. And I noticed a couple of times when I was in the middle of hitting these clubs, I was catching it just slightly on the heel, yeah. as opposed to catching it slightly, you know, my normal spot slightly high toe, and that keeps my spin rate down pretty, pretty well. Okay. Um, so that's going to influence it a, it a lot. But the good news is, even with the shot direction, how consistent the spin rate with all four drivers it was. was. Yeah, We're talking. I mean, we we should. Yeah. You know, Within 200 these, RPMs, with all four yeah, drivers there. You can see how. Uh, you know, I mean, it was between 18 and 22, between 20 and 23, 
you know, 17, high 17s and low 21. I mean, it was, you're not straying from that kind of that consistent average very far. The deviation is very little from all of them. So right. that's something any player wants. Uh, amateur player, skilled player, you want to know if you hit the ball off really kind of a variety of places on the face, the spin is going to be consistent for you. Yeah, and you've sort of still got optimization. Yep. You can adjust the, the loft on, on the hosel setting. You can adjust the lie angle on the, on the hosel setting there too. I could go down to eight if I, if I wanted to to try mm -hmm. and reduce that spin a little bit more. Uh, especially since you know my attack angle, it's, it's pretty far up there. And if yeah. I wanted to hit the ball even further, I could. Or make it even harder to turn over, I could. Yeah, yeah. So, so there's we, options. We'll get into kind of the who's at four here in the final thoughts. But I can see, you know, just from a fitting perspective, having all four of these club heads, I think bodes really well for Callaway. Just having, you know, you're going to cover every golfer with these, these models. You know, they, I think a lot of people will be geared towards like, seeing all the correction that that Max D head provided in this yep. test could really be a, a big winner for people that have that, that slice tendency. But then you see the forgiveness of the max and actually how that spin stayed low. And then these other two were so consistent spin-wise and carry distance-wise. I mean, a lot of players are going to be looking at this, this Rogue ST series and be very intrigued, I think. Yeah, we're seeing good, good trends. So the Rogue ST Max D, you know it's the launch angle, highest launch angle at mm -hmm. 17.1. You go to the triple diamond, it's 15.2. Even with the attack angle being, I mean, between the two of them, they're the exact same attack angle. Yep. We're seeing there that it was launching a little bit lower with the triple diamond. Mm -hmm. So that's good for those golfers that launch the ball too high and spin the ball as well. Mm -hmm. uh, and then the direction changed that spin because we're talking on the curve difference between those. Right, right. Yeah. I think we're, we're talking a big, big difference. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you're talking 100 <laughs> feet of curve difference there between them. Yeah, it's funny. It, I mean, there's that trend, you know, the, I guess we kind of went from most left curve to least left curve. Uh, even though you are a player that plays a draw most frequently, you can see how the club head can kind of impact how much draw uh, is played into the shot there. But yep. overall, testing wise, this is pretty darn good from Callaway and these Rogue ST drivers here. Yeah, they are, they're incredible. They, they look good, they feel good, and they're gonna be a great hit for old golfers. So testing complete, Thomas, of the Rogue ST drivers. Um, I know you're, you're kind of taking a deeper dive into the numbers here, and one thing you wanted to touch on was hit location a little bit further, because you know we, we didn't quite see the trends on spin, but I think we're seeing why here we look at the impact location. Yeah, I mean, I, I talked about earlier the way the, the driver's set up at address, the lie angle. We're talking about a lie angle of about a three degree difference mm -hmm. between them. Um, and then the head design is, is different. And hit location is huge. It's going to influence the spin. And we're seeing the spin rate with all of them all within 200 RPMs. Yep. But we weren't seeing, for example, the, the, the triple diamond spinning the lowest. It was very still very low. Yeah. But we'd noticed that the the actually the, the draw bias driver mm -hmm. spins on the least. So I wanted to touch on that a little bit. So let's take a look at the hit location for that particular driver. We'll notice when the club was a little more upright, I was catching a little bit more on the toe side. Mm -hmm. We were testing with the exact same golf shaft, same length. Yep. I was changing the heads out each single time. But then we start kind of looking at these others. Notice how that just, just shifted just a little bit there. Yep. And spin rate was still very, very low. So those two were very, very similar on the hit location. But then we look at these other two that sit a little bit flatter. Notice it was actually just a little bit lower on, on the face, just a little bit a little bit closer to the to the middle of the face. Triple diamond. Mm -hmm. I had a harder time hitting that in the middle of the face. Now yeah. that club head's smaller. Yes, if you catch the ball that low on the face, the ball's gonna spin more. Yeah. Now if this was not a low spinning driver, yeah. head, and I was going to catch it that low on the face, we're talking here, in fact, height five millimeters below the center. Yeah. You would expect that spin rate to skyrocket. Yeah. And you'll notice the spin rate was That's, still very, very and I, good. And believe me, we've, we've done some videos on the channel where we've kind of pulled that up on certain drivers. Uh, maybe it's irons, maybe it's fairy woods, but we've seen how much the spin can go up when you hit the ball lower of, of center like that. It can yeah. go up. 500 RPM sometimes. To see it, the triple diamond head stay down like that and spin is pretty remarkable because, uh, you know, it's funny that you didn't really mention the, the feel of it being low on the face. Then a quick investigation and suddenly that, that spin rate explains itself a little bit and we see that. Because you, you expect, you see that average for hit location, you, see, you, you expect to see some of the spin numbers up 25, 2600. Right. And they're not. 
Yeah, and is it is it human error? Yes, it's on it's on me. Um, but you know, one thing we can always work on with a golfer is um, the type of club head that they're yeah. playing, the loft on the club head. You now they can also always work on that hit location there too. But I wish I was hitting the Rogue ST LS Triple Diamond here. Yeah. Because I would have seen the spin rate, you know, a lot lower. But the reality is, when I was testing, I was catching it low on the face, mm -hmm. but the spin rate stayed low. That's what the mm -hmm. takeaway is. And I was leaving some distance on the table. And I, no doubt, if I was higher, right. high toe, oh, yeah. as opposed to low on the face, I would, I would have seen the 300 carry you would distance. Have. You would have right. seen that. I know yep. that 300 carry distance is going to nag at you for a while. Right. But, for um, another testing day. Oh, yeah. And yeah. I know you'll get there once we, you know, we'll compare it to maybe some other drivers. Um, but let's get into the who's it for now. So we'll kind of go through each four, uh, each of the four club heads, and we'll talk about, um, you know, who, I guess, the, the, the template of golfer that is the best fit for each of these drivers. We'll start with that first one you hit, the Max D, the Rogue ST Max D. Talked about how there's a draw bias, so probably someone that does struggle with face open or a slice. Yep, higher handicap players, even lower handicap golfers that slice the ball a lot, mm -hmm. um, looking for a little extra help getting the ball up in the air, but that, that draw bias is, yeah. is purely what it's for. It's going to help the player turn the ball over mm -hmm. easier, and I really noticed it. Yeah, oh yeah, and you're testing for you. I mean, yeah. it was crazy how much curve yeah. there was on that ball. So. Uh, now the Rogue ST Max, uh, I believe it's going to be the highest MOI. So really just the golfer that wants forgiveness. Yeah. This is going to fit most golfers. Yeah. Honestly, the, the Rogue ST Max is still going to fit the majority of golfers coming in for fittings, coming mm -hmm. into the store, um, just because it's more as a, a neutral, slightly draw bias head, but it's, it's just forgiving. And yeah. that's what we all need. Oh, yeah. yeah. I mean, every golfer needs forgiveness at, at some level. So and then... The Max LS, uh, it's going to be interesting now kind of dividing the Max LS and the Triple Diamond because they're going to be fit for a similar player, but there's just a little bit more forgiveness packed into that Max LS. Yeah, it's, uh, so it's highest, still highest MOI, mm -hmm. but low spin yeah. is, is, is what that model is. And I think it's, there's, there's more weight forward rather than back with that particular yeah. head, um, where the Triple Diamond has, you know, I guess even more weight forward, there's yeah. a smaller club head, which is going to cause the sport yeah. to spin less. Yeah. yeah. And so I think that Max LS is, you know, it's, I think both are geared for higher swing players. Both are geared for players that maybe will like to work the ball. I think you'll get more workability out of the triple diamond, uh, but then the Max LS will probably buy, provide just a little bit more forgiveness and like MOI than the triple diamond will. So there's kind of like give and take there for those higher swing speed players out there that are making that decision. But uh, I think we saw the testing here kind of prove itself. Oh, I mean, what a driver series by Callaway here. You got four drivers, which is new. Uh, in the past, they've had three. You got four drivers, and they clearly have a different, you know, set of characteristics and ball flight tendencies that they offer, which I think is really, really cool to see. We saw it on Trackman and how well, uh, you know, they differentiate themselves. Yeah, it's, it's great having, as a fitter, it's great having so yeah. many different options because we can lead the, the golfer down the, the right direction right off the mm -hmm. bat. And then we can fine tune with the golf shaft and the hosel adjustments that we need to. And they're, they're awesome clubs. They look incredibly good. They feel good as well. Mm -hmm. they don't, they're not super loud. And I think we haven't touched on the sound with these mm -hmm. as much. Yeah. They're not as loud as some previous Callaway drivers yeah, have, I agree. have sounded. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I think for sure four winners here from Callaway in 2022. Thomas, thanks for joining and testing today. Really good numbers up there. And I think uh, all four of them will be big winners for Callaway in 2022. Golfers, if you haven't, make sure you subscribe to the channel and like this video. Leave a comment and tell us what you think about the Rogue ST drivers at your first glance. And then make sure you schedule a fitting at secondswing.com or at one of our five store locations. And make sure you get fit for a Rogue ST driver today and make sure you hit more fairways in 2022. So, Thomas, thanks again for joining. Again, really good one here today. Not a problem.